Hello everyone, and welcome to Gauss's birthday special. Uh, this is his 247th birthday, so getting up there a bit. But to celebrate, we're going to be evaluating the Gaussian integral. So to begin, what we're going to do is actually just change the bounds uh, a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just note that this right here is an even function, and that if I say this is now 2 times the integral, from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x squared dx. This is just the exact same thing as the thing above. And then I'm just going to do uh, a quick little u sub. So let u equal x squared, meaning that du equals 2x dx. And that subsequently du over 2 times the square root of u is just equal to dx itself, meaning that our integral right here is equal to, well, the integral from 0 to infinity still, the bounds will not change, but if e to the minus u over the square root of u du. And the reason I'm kind of breezing through all of this work right here is because this really isn't the interesting bit of the video. This is just kind of manipulation to basically show that this right here, that our actual Gaussian, is just equal to uh, gamma of one half. <clears throat> or in other words, this is just negative one half factorial. This is really all I wanted to show uh, with this bit right here, and then we're going to evaluate, uh, actually evaluate that integral right there. But this is just kind of something to keep in mind, uh, and just kind of put that in your back pocket, uh, just for now, because we'll bring that up towards the end. But for now, let's focus on this integral right here. The integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus u over the square root of u du. So, the way we're going to be doing this is through some good old complex analysis. And the contour we're going to be using today is the keyhole contour. So, we're going to have our big circle. Then we're going to have, we're going to be integrating like this. Ooh, that came out much better than I thought. No way. Okay. Anyway, but this is just kind of the standard, uh, the usual keyhole contour we've used before. Um, so yeah, let's just kind of name some things. So uh, integration along that way will be gamma 1, integration along the opposite way will be gamma 2, and then now the small circle there is going to be gamma 3. We know that the whole line integral around this thing is going to be equal to 0, as there are just no poles actually inside of this contour, our only pole is enclosed by this right, by gamma 3 right there, which we will be noting and exploiting shortly. But for now, let's focus on the integral over gamma 1, or integrals over gamma 1 and gamma 2. So almost, I'm essentially by definition, uh, the integral over gamma 1, um, I'm gonna call this i up here, the integral over gamma 1 is just i. I mean, just kind of by definition. But now let's take a look at the integral over gamma 2. Actually, I don't, I don't want to write that there. Our integral over gamma 2. This right here is going to equal to the integral from infinity to 0. Uh, oh my goodness, I cannot write a 0 today. The integral from infinity to 0 of e to the minus u over the square root of u du. But one thing we can note is that, well, we can rotate this around, you know, 360 degrees, uh, say u is, you know, u times e to the 2 pi i, and essentially what we'll get is instead of this just canceling everything out and being 0, is that we get, well, you're about to see. So we're going to say u is u times uh, e to the 2 pi i, and by properties of exponents, essentially what we have, and I'm going to change the bounds and introduce a negative sign here real quick, uh, we have the negative integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus u du, but then divided by the square root of u times e to the pi i, which is just quite famously negative 1, meaning it cancels with that negative sign, leading us with, leading us with the fact that this is just our integral as well. So, this right here is equal to the integral over gamma 1 plus the integral of gamma 2, uh, which is just i plus i, so this is 2i. But then we have our, a little tricksy one. We have the integral over gamma 3. 
what on earth is that going to be? And the answer there actually is not too terrible. And the reason for that is if we look at our contour right here and where our pole is, you'll notice that essentially what we're doing, uh, at least in the limit, is enclosing our pole right here by a circle, um, by essentially a closed shape, meaning that the integral over gamma 3 is just going to be equal to, well, 2 pi i times the uh, residue inside with a slight asterisk caveat next to that. Uh, and the reason for that is because we are actually going uh, clockwise. So you'll notice that, you know, note the arrow there. Uh, we're actually going clockwise. So this is going to be negative 2 pi i times the residue at 0 here. So to just kind of plug this into our equation right here, into our general equation, we find that 2i minus 2 pi i times the residue at 0 is equal to 0 itself, meaning that 2i is just equal to 2 pi i times the residue at 0. So now we have to do, all we have to do is find the residue at 0, and we should be done. So let's get to it. The residue at 0. <laughs> So, I'm just going to write a function right here just for reference, so this is our function right here. Uh, this, is a, this is our f, and what we're going to do with this is just apply the residue theorem. Nothing too crazy. But the degree of our pull we have to note is not a normal, say, 1 or 2, or if we're kind of unlucky, 3. It's a, it, it's a 1 half, which makes things slightly more weird or slightly weirder than they otherwise would be. So by the residue theorem, we just have this. But we also can't forget the derivative that is out front. So we have d uh, over du, but it's not just a normal derivative. It's uh, the derivative to the power, or the degree of the pole, minus 1. So it's actually a negative 1 half derivative. And then, I'm just going to put a line there for separation. Uh, we have a 1 over negative 1 half factorial, and that just comes from, this is just straight from the residue theorem. And there's a limit here uh, as uh, u approaches zero, but I'm just going to say that's implied. So simplifying this down a little bit, what we find is that, and I should probably uh, write more explicitly, this is the residue at zero. Uh, so simplifying this down a little bit, we find that our residue at zero is equal to negative one over negative one half factorial times the negative one-half derivative of e to the minus u. And this is kind of the weird part. What on earth is this? What is the negative one-half derivative of e to the minus u? And well, the answer to that uh, is kind of, or not even kind of, it lies in this fact right here. So we can find the nth derivative of e to the ax. And we just know that if we differentiate this once, we'll get, you know, a e to the ax. If we differentiate it twice or three times, we'll end up with a squared e to the ax or a cubed e to the ax, respectively. So what we have is an a to the n times e to the ax, meaning that if we say n is just negative one half, then that means one, our derivative is equal to one over the square root of a times e to the ax. And in our case right here, a is just equal to, well, you can kind of see, a is just equal to negative 1, meaning that our derivative term right here is just 1 over the square root of negative 1 times e to the negative x, or u in this case. But it doesn't necessarily matter since we're actually evaluating uh, this at 0 anyway, so I'll kind of sub this all in over here, actually. What we have evaluating this term right here is a 1 over the square root of negative 1, but that's just i. So we have 1 over i times e to the negative u, but we're evaluating this at u equals 0, so that right there is just 1. And then we have a 1 over negative 1 half factorial. And just moving the i up to the numerator, what we have is our residue at 0 is equal to negative i over negative 1 half factorial. So subbing this in to our equation involving our integral up there, 
we can actually solve for i. So let's get started with that. Uh, I'm just going to cancel the, actually, I won't do that off screen. That, I'll, I won't. So 2i is equal to 2 pi i times a residue at 0, but a residue at 0 is just negative i over negative 1 half factorial. And, you know, our i's cancel, that gives us 1, our 2's will cancel, meaning that i is equal to pi over negative 1 half factorial. But we are not done, because at the beginning of this video, I did note this one little thing up here, that our integral is actually equal to negative 1 half factorial itself, uh, or gamma of 1 half, if you like. Meaning that if we kind of go back down here and note that, well, hold on, i is actually just equal to negative 1 half factorial, we can just solve for i in this case. We can just multiply both sides by negative 1 half factorial. And what we get is i squared is equal to pi, or more famously, i is equal to the square root of pi. And there we have it. That is my take on, or rather complex take, uh, on the Gaussian integral right here. I hope everyone enjoyed and uh, had a very normal day today, and I'll see you all in the next one.